Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, righteous Jesus. Wherever you are all over the world, it's time now to burn. The Lord Jesus is in control. So the Lord Jesus is going to do something tonight. Using us as a vessel for his glory. And I pray wherever you are. Get connected and get connected. Link in. Let's pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this moment, Lord. We thank you for this moment, Lord. Righteous Jesus, Son of the Most High God, cause your goodness in our midst, remove all the boundaries, and link us together for your glory. Lord, forgive our unrighteousness, and bless your holy name. Jesus. Jesus' name, you are of Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords. So if you declare yourself of Jesus, then he's connected to you. And he will give you as a child what belongs to the children. Big time! Big time. Now I want to teach you something about the tormenting foundation. I want somebody to know something because you may, do, may not know why Christ came. But I want to teach you something right from the foundation that if you do not know them you may be asking yourself so many questions. Why, why, why me? Why, why not? So I want to tell you something. Listen carefully. The things that come from the foundation, from our backgrounds, from our beginning, from how we are formed, from how we live, and how we've grown up, where we passed, that those are foundations. That may be blessing your life or tormenting you. And nobody can escape that unless one who knows him who serves. He who has the knowledge, the gnosko of our Lord Jesus. Jesus. Say tormenting foundation. Tell your neighbor wherever you're seated there in the school. Say tormenting foundation. <laughs> Are you there? Big time. So let me teach you something, brother. Or oh, my sister. About the tormenting that. Foundations. And, uh, I'll give you some biblical references. You may know what I'm telling you. If you don't work on the foundations, all your roots in the spiritual realm, you're likely to, hit, to find a lot of roadblocks around the way. And you wonder what happened. Why can't I really overcome this? Why is this too hard for me? But there's a man called Jesus. He came to help us on some yeah, of those things. And to help us 100% without any cost. I'm going to give you an example of a man called Jabez. Listen carefully. Because I know everybody who will pass there. If you read the book, that's the book of uh, Chronicles. That's his first Chronicles. There was a man called Jabez. This man had a pain in his life. And one day he realized that I need to seek this God and ask him to take this pain away from me. So that I may live a life like a peaceful life. Read everybody. Examine it carefully. First Chronicles. Chapter 4. Okay, verse from, start from verse 9. 9 and 10, okay. First Chronicles, chapter 4, from verse 9. Mm -hmm. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, 
that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from all the evil that I may not cause pain. Listen to that. Mark there. So God granted him what he requested. So God granted what he requested. Now listen. Verse 9. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called his name Jabez. Saying, because I bore him in pain. He gave him a name. Jabez. Jabez. This guy was an horrible guy. He was more than any of his family members. But when he was coming on the earth, his mom went through a lot of pain. You know, his mom went and said, I'm tired of this pregnancy. I'm tired of this child. I don't know when it will come out. My child. Uh, girl, uh, I wish it was a boy. Ah. Uh, okay. So they mentioned some funny things. Remember, the way they conceived you in a funny way as well. <laughs> I will show you that. Then Jabez. Jabez. Realized that, oh, the name Jabez means because I was born in pain. Okay. Mm. He saw things were not moving. Yes, I have every. I'm, I'm rich, but I'm struggling too much. I, I go through a lot of pain. Why am I going through this pain? Oh, my mom went through it. Okay. Whatever I do, I go through pain to achieve it. And yet I have the ability of achieving it. Like he looked in his foundation. When he looked in the foundation, he saw a tormenting foundation. And he said, okay. That's why my mom named me this. The pain my mom went through is to deliver me. Is the pain I'm bearing to to, to deliver anything into life. Then he said, Lord, oh God of Israel, oh that you may bless me indeed. That you may indeed bless me. He knew that he's blessed. But the blessing had pain. You are blessed, but you have a lot of losses. You're blessed with a lot of struggles. Yes, you have things, but everything you have, it gives you pain. It brings trouble. You know, yes, you got them. And he said, Lord, bless me. Bless me indeed. The real thing. And enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me. Not that, that your hand will be with me. Because he knows if the hand of the Lord is with him. And you will keep me from the evil that may not cause, not cause pain. From the evil that cause pain, let your hand be with me and remove that. Cloud. That I may not cause pain. You understand? Look at your foundation. Look at your foundation. How did you come? It has a lot of meaning, boy. It plays a big role in your life. You may be praying, but you're not touching that root. You are not touching that thing. For you are saying, ah, ah. I'm saying, oh, Lord, give me, Lord, Lord. Lord, give me. Let me tell you something. A man like like David, when he was confessing and asking God to forgive him, he looked into the foundation. I said, I've killed Uriah just because of his wife. And that's uh, Psalms 51, verse 5. It said, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. And in sin, my mother conceived me. In sin, my mother conceived me. They say, did you just say, really, wait, my mama? How many... Uh, why did Jesse have? How did I come forth? 
said, okay. It's just a man. That you don't know, yes, eh? Must have less study for my mama. It lasted. It was in love. And I came. Now the suit of last is disturbing me. Father, and seeing my mother conceived. But have mercy on me. And seeing my mom conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in inner word pass you. You want, it, you want it things to be the true things. But I came in a vague way. And that sinful impulse in me has brought a sin. So what am I saying? David looked into the foundations. Jabez looked into the foundations. And they were able to overcome. You, you see what I'm saying? Your mom conceived you and your dad who was a drunkard. Now you live in a confused life. My life is confused. I don't know what is confusing my life. He was drunk. And when he said that mama has conceived, he just touched his head and said, Ah! Hey! And that has become a pain in your life. And most of us overlook such things. Let me give you an example of a person like Moses. A story of Moses who never walked on the roots. He never bothered about the roots. And guess what? The roots failed him. However much was anointed, however powerful may seem to be, if you don't touch the roots, you may fail. Let me give you an example of Moses. Book of Exodus chapter 2. Go to verse 10. Exodus chapter 2, verse 10. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water. <laughs> because I dream, I drew him from the world. The real mom of Moses could not keep him at the moment of his birth because if Pharaoh had instructed that they kill all the boys who had been born, the Hebrew boys, who were born at that time. Because a revelation had passed that a deliverance had been given back. But they never knew who was exactly. So they said, kill all the Hebrew boys. So the mom of Moses took the boy on the river bank. As Moses was, as the, the Pharaoh's daughter went to the river to shower. It was a ritual shower, not showering that because she was dirty. They have, in the Pharaoh's house, there's a shower. So why did she go to the river? To do a ritual shower. So there she gets a boy. And he say, oh, mm. the gods of Egypt have answered. You boy, will be, care, be taken care of until the right time. And I'll present you before my dad. So they, 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 they took care of him. It's a wrong story about there. But he grew up in Pharaoh's house. He was named by Pharaoh's daughter. And what was the name? Moses. Meaning what? I drew him from water. Not that root. Not it carefully now. Now there comes time that Moses is meant to start the mission. When he ran away, he went the land where he went, the Midian. Then he sat near the well. There comes a girl. He helped her. He was at the well. Mark that. That's where he got a wife. 
Guess what? Time comes for Moses to deliver his mission. The Israelites from Egypt. He moves with them, moves with them, moves with them, moves with them. Ahead of him, he finds a red sea. That was a hindrance. That he could not break through the sea. It's the water. That he found the roots, the road tormenting part of it. And God say, Hey man, aren't you a fireman? Why don't you burn that water and spread it? Most lifted his rod. The water divided. They dream out of water. So he passed through the water. The water separated, he passed. When the Egyptians came, the same water consumed them. That's Moses. When the, when the Israelites were thirsty, they said, we need to drink some water. God tells Moses, go and speak to the rock. Moses gets a stick. Goes and hits the rock. Push, 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 push. Still water came. But God says, speak to it. Not to hit it. Why have you broken faith? Why have you not obeyed me? And God kept it. Said, okay, Moses didn't say sorry, Lord. Because the, the foundation in him, there was a demon of water. So, time comes. God tells Moses, you will not go to the promised land. Remember the time I told you to speak to the rock to get water and you still hit it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know your guy was coming. I, I remember. He said you broke faith. Couldn't you control that thing in you? The, 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 the tormenting foundation of fellow in you. Can't you work on it? I gave you the anointing. So, so basing on that man, you will not go to promise. Right? But anyway, but in the spirit, Moses went to heaven. He went to heaven. I've, been, I've prayed, it's, in, it's about uh, three times when I've seen the Lord appear to me with Elijah and Moses. When the three of them are together. So he went to heaven. But in his worldly mission, these tormenting things worked against him. God can watch them, they can work against you on earth. Work against your earthly blessings. Though they may not stop your way to heaven. In the case of a prayerful person. But they can torment you on earth. The tormenting foundations are there. Are you there? Big time. They can't torment you on earth. And for you, you, just, you don't mind about it. Say, I, I'm, I'm, I leave. So God give me, God give me, God give me. God give me. God give me. God give me. You don't mind about these foundations. You should mind about them. Because she is. She is. She is. Yes. Came and empowered you. The case of Solomon. In Songa ya Solomon. The way he got, the way his dad got him. It was a doubtless. And the guy was able to get more than a thousand bagobakashi. <laughs> hey, I tell you what. And that's the thing that failed him to make it. Because it was in the foundation. If you do it when it's within the foundation. And you, you, you don't discern it. It will work against you. Solomon was so blessed by God. The Lord loved the boy. The Lord loved the boy so seriously. But he was so reckless. He was a little reckless. To the point that even the devil took the portion of, 
of him. Because at his old age, by old age, he had had a lot of ladies who were influencing him. Instead of guiding them, they were guiding him. So what happened? When and worshipped evil things. And he ended up making covenants. And the devil knew that this guy has a secret. Upon him, God has empowered him more than any other. He's an empowered man. A man who is empowered. When God created the world, on the sixth day, he created man. man. And when he created man on the sixth day, on the seventh day, he rested. Because everything was perfect. So upon six, there's a code that manages humanity. So the devil said, okay, I'm going to take up that code. Take your wealth in the spiritual realm. And you from the kingdom of David. Let me show you. You may say, Brother is talking words in the book of 1 Kings. Let's go in 1 Kings. Chapter 10. Verse 14. 1 Kings, go there. 1 Kings, uh -huh. chapter 10, verse mm. 14. Uh -huh. The weight of gold that came to Solomon, Yali, was 666 talents of gold. Triple six. Mukaga Mukag. It was a rich no coward that e, had been set for wealth e, yo, e, yas, e, yateke wateke we, among us humanity. E, li, o, li, mu, o, mu, Solomon hit the maximum. Kati, Solomon, ye, yachiko, unapaka, Guess what? Tebe, he goes and he makes covenants with these women who are worshipping devil. The, the beast took the code. And then he says, now this is a demonic code. Now it has taken the way what was meant for man went under the control of the beast. Now when you have a triple six, you go to hell. That's, his own, that's how he gave it away. But where was the problem? It was from the foundation. He didn't work against that impulse. He was influenced. And he had the kingdom of David. Me sometimes when I'm firing, I say, you be fire you now in the name of Jesus. I raise my wealth. You understand what I'm saying? You can only have it in the case you don't know how to control that evil guy. You burn him up. And I'm going to teach him how to burn him. And get back the way from the hands of the evil one. And I tell you, many people who are greedy for money, they're under the control of the beasts. Once you're so greedy for it, and controlled by money, hey, the beast, the beast will dictate your way. When you have money, you should know how to pray. And you are not controlled. And I don't say the beast has money. It's a poor thing that is told the code. That it was meant for man. Now, that's an advanced gospel. But what I want to tell you in a few things, man, that these foundations, if they are not carefully handled, they will, they will distort, they will cause pain to your destiny. Solomon went to heaven. Because later he repented in the last days. I said, Father, uh, things we are so sweet for me. Oh, we'll say, okay. Come, come, um, leave them away. Leave them, leave them. Oh, he came. But where is the problem? The biggest problem that he worshipped the devil. To please those people that he was wanted to please. He married from Pharaoh's Paris as well. And then he went to the king of Sheba, queen of Sheba. And those were high guys that had to influence him. The roots, the tormenting roots. Say neighbor, tormenting roots. If you don't work about them, 
You may be a girl. And your dad married more than one wife. And for you, think because you're a girl, it will not work against you. I tell you, if you don't pray, your husband may kill another baby and say, hey! <laughs> when it's from you as you, and for you, think it's him. So, what am I saying? Moses was just passing by. Pharaoh's daughter was not a real mom. They just brought him up from there. But because of that, he grew up from there. And whatever he acquired from them caused a foundation. A foundation that later tormented him. You might, they might have brought you from, up from somewhere. From a certain family. From a certain background. They never did you anything wrong. But they might have practiced witchcraft. They might have fed you rich of food. And something entered you. You might have slept in. When they put witchcraft in a compound. To pro they think that it protects them. And they think hurts your destiny. I'm telling you friend. You might have gone to school. Where the school. Where they thought that the school would prosper from witchcraft. When the HM, the headmaster thought that when he puts witchcraft, he will perform better. And then he has the the children. You grow, but you see dream that school. You see dream it. That's the retrogressive force. It means in the foundation of education, something went wrong somewhere. You got to work on it. In your prayer life. Chi. Yeah. Chi. Yeah. Chi. Yeah. Chi. Yeah. Chi. Yeah. Chi. Yeah. Chi. 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 Jesus. Jesus has the power to help you. Yes. Yes. You might have studied from a school. And it was even a government school. Probably. And the headmaster was a believer of witchcraft. And he said that all the children perform well. And list a spell on the children. Little knowing that is bewitching them. That they can never go beyond that. And they're going to stay still. So you grow. You work. But you still dream the same school. You're dreaming there. You might have rented a house. You entered the house with a witch man. And you never sanctified it. You just entered the houses. As you rent, you just rent a house. People have let their witchcrafts. And you keep acquiring them. You don't know how to sanctify. When brother on prays for water, you say, look at him. I give it to you so that it's a weapon. To be able to sanctify. Where you are going. You understand me? Tormenting foundations. Tormenting foundation. Look at the poverty of your dad. I don't think you can go, go beyond it. Unless you fight what fought him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the trouble of your mama. You may not go beyond the pain. You may not escape that pain. Not until you walk against it. By praying. Like Jabez prayed. Father that you may bless me indeed. Take away the strife. My mom went through when she was conceiving. When she went through the living people. Take away the strife. I'm tired of struggling in everything I'm doing. Your mom struggled. Ah, today oh, it's, it's a baby. To deliver you. You come on earth and you think it's just like that. Hey, hey. Mm. 
to put up anything. Becomes a struggle. And you say, why do I struggle in everything I do? Even this small house I'm building. Why do I have to struggle? You never walked on the roads. Let's do something. When Jesus says yes, yes who can you? say no? When Jesus loves yes. you, he will watch you because he believes you have faith. That you have faith. We are not teaching the history of the Bible. We are teaching what Christ came to do. It's time you believe it. that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is what? Yes, Jesus is Lord. Yes, we are So we are teaching you the things that will help you. The gospel is a matter of words. By our power. It, you must practice it in your life. Look into your names. Look into your foundations. Look in your background. Look at everything. And work upon it. That you may get it.